And we've got the collateralized loan options for those who do not want to cash out. How does one, like a realtor, service their clients to, to be able to actually transact, uh, you know, cryptocurrency into real estate? Because that seems like it can be like in a Rubik's Cube and a little bit confusing. Kind of break it down for everyone it who's can watching. Be. Yeah, absolutely. So there, there are three ways. Uh, well, I'll just, I'll just break it down to how a realtor can actually service their clients. There's, there's other ways, but, mm -hmm. but the, the meat and potatoes of it, uh, it's uh, we can do a wallet to wallet transaction. I do not recommend that for any. Uh, novice uh, seller who is just kind of stepping into crypto. Uh, it's usually with the with the people you know who are Bitcoin maximalist, you know, and only want to take some kind of crypto. Um, but the, we we can do those now. Um, uh, most common uh, is a crypto to cash conversion, and I do use uh, escrow companies. We do it a little bit differently in Southern California, where uh, title and escrow are different or, or separate. Uh, but I do my escrow company who is set up with these payment processors can handle those types of transactions uh, And she also works as a sub escrow to any other title company in the in the country, which is lovely um, and then we've got the collateralized loan options for those who do not want to cash out they they um, the, the the loan uh, the, sorry the lender uh, keeps their their crypto they lend against it it could be 50 60 70 percent LTV um, and now we even have collateralized loans that are tied to 30-year fixed, uh, which is amazing uh, because before this, it was actually, it only happened like this, this year. Uh, prior to this year, uh, it was a short-term loan. People had to pay it back in six months to a year. So, you know, we've got the 30-year option. So there's, there's lots of options out there now. So let's talk about that third one, right? Because right now there's, there's so much uh, turmoil, right, yeah. in the marketplace with, with uh, cryptocurrency exchanges in different places that mm -hmm. essentially lent out, right, uh, or hedged against or have borrowed against or allowed people to do these things. And now, I mean, billions of dollars and collapses of, 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 of companies and people's wealth. So talk about that 30 year fixed option is mm -hmm. what and what uh, that I'm trying to make sense of that. Are these yeah. are you seeing some challenges in those people who've done those deals? You know what? I no, not at the moment. I mean, mm -hmm. they they're they've been doing them uh, slowly and incrementally. Um, I the the particular company that I'm, I'm speaking with at the moment, <laughs> I mm -hmm. mean, it can change. It's Milo and they've they've played their cards very smartly. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the other, the other companies like, like Celsius, mm -hmm. Three Arrows, all that, you know, they, they got a little too big, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they were kind of lending off of some, you know, like air, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know, they kind of mm -hmm. got a little too crazy about that, but, you know, and, and, you know, these are being bought out by, by bigger conglomerates or whatever, but, um, the, I believe that, you know, like the 2018 crash that kind of weeded out all of the, the bad mm -hmm. players, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The 2022, I'm not going to call it a crash, kind of a, a, a slow downward <laughs> crawl. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's going to weed out a lot of the bad players mm -hmm. as well. And the, all the lenders, there's there are lenders out there that are still standing, and mm -hmm. they're doing just fine because mm -hmm. they played. Smart.